It's about. a great point, man. With with fitness or really anything you're looking to accomplish, like the days that I've been most stretched with client calls, uh, different assignments, different things to do for my business, workouts, those are the days. I hey, what's going on, everybody? Skylar Dean here, men's lifestyle fat loss coach. And today we are breaking down episode three of Will Smith's Best Shape of My Life. If you want to see the other two episodes, the links will be in the description of this video. Uh, really not much to say about this one. I am going to go in and just, you know, obviously speak about what we see. So with that being said, let's get into the episode. This one is called, I blew the deadline for my book. So. If I get attacked by a camel, that would be That's terrible. That's man. They got deer, they got camel. As far as the weight loss is concerned, it's all on point. It's all going well. It's the way to go work out. We are tracking around about a pound a week. So he's in a so great it like those last few weeks were, and I think he's really... Um, plateau. Or last few weeks were plateaus. Attacked by a camel, that would be terrible. pretty dope. Not dope, but pretty accurate, right? As far as the weight loss is concerned, you get a plateau, you it's get stuck. 111, 110, 111. The way to go yeah. work out. We are tracking around about a pound a week. So he's in a great frame of mind at the moment, and I think he's really enjoying it. This is fantastic. You gotta mix it up, you know what I mean? So it's fine. Dubai is a very bike friendly city, Jazz. Town. Everyone's attention. Welcome to Skydive Dubai. Who's up first? As a child, I would disappear into my imagination. Any questions from the champion? Any questions from the challenger? Let's get it on! This constant stream of images and colors and ideas were as real to me as real life. Sometimes even more so. Living in your own little world with your own rules can be an advantage sometimes. I can make my mind believe anything. I was able to cultivate an almost delusional level of confidence. As an adult, I realized that my imagination is my gift. And when it merges with my work ethic, I can make money rain from the heavens. So that'll be First down. That's how I do it. On the ground, son. Yeah, that's 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 gangster. <laughs> that's gangster. Thank you, man. There you go. I'm inspired to create when I live on the edge of my capacity and capabilities. Right. So, I like to do things right now. Let's start today. While we're rapping about it, let's be. It's about a great it. point, man. With with fitness or really anything you're looking to accomplish, like the days that I've been most stretched with client calls, uh, different assignments, different things to do for my business, workouts, those are the days I get the most done. And I found that the days where I don't have much to do and I'm struggling to fill in the lines and figure out what to do, that's when I tend to gravitate towards the unproductive things. That's when I tend to feel less motivated, a little more lazy and kind of complacent. So it's about stretching yourself, man. Stretch yourself every day. On the helipad, he we had a man. bad. Will has the classic work hard, play hard mindset. A lot of his professional success, at least, could be traced to some of that. But this behavior is actually an example of what we refer to as a manic defense. Yeah. Son, son. 
Yen. Movie star, rule number 15. Never film a movie star when he's abusing his staff, unless it's funny. Then shoot it and circulate it amongst the crew. The biggest challenge with Will is he's always taking on hundreds of different things at once. You only have 24 hours in a day. So you plan on getting in the best shape the best of your life? best shape life. of my life at 52. Why do you do two gloves? I just do. Good answer. <laughs> movie star rule number 12. Never go faster than a movie star. <laughs> How's everything? Yeah, it is all good. Khabib! You cut weight? Oh, yeah, I'm down. You cut weight? In my own professional career, yeah. when I check, I cut almost 800 kilos. That's kilo. crazy. If you need cutting weight, just... I know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that manic defense, it's like having a crutch, and I think he almost needs to be set up into impossible tasks to be able to push himself to excellence. There's a real seduction to it. 800 kilos is... 1763 1763 pounds that is insane man i put out a video of ethan suplee who is the guy in remember the titans who lost a ton of weight and he said before he finally kept his weight off he lost and gained about a thousand pounds so this is almost double that dude that is that's insane man but there's also a real danger big shot big shot let's go let's go feels like will's really filling his days lately three two one Time. Doesn't ever seem to sit down. Hey, Will, just checking in on those chapters. Let me know. Bye. I don't know how y'all don't know what it is by now. <laughs> how many weeks do we have to be together before y'all can know what it is? Becoming famous is about as much fun as the material world has to offer. In 1989, I was at the top of the mountain, so I purchased my first mansion. I flew 10 of my friends from Philly to Atlanta. As always, I had Charlie Mack by my side, and I closed down the Gucci store. Whatever y'all want, I got it, I said, slinging my Amex down on the counter. These movie star rules, just so you know, are ironclad and unchangeable, and they've been around for centuries. Definitely going to take a psychological toll on Will. The thing is, Will as a child created a rich imaginary world that ultimately we all got invited into through theater. And if that's how a person gets through childhood, you can easily see how that blurring between a real world and an imaginary world not only becomes a way to cope, but it could also become a way to escape. Our minds our story machines. The functioning of our brain is narrative. Setting our goals and what we're gonna go for and how we're gonna achieve it is based on the story we tell ourselves. Our mind needs a story. Yep. How you feeling, man? Muy bien, y tú? Oh, bien, gracias. Just hot today. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing, we're starting later. It's pretty hot out there. It is. It's and when, still... you, when you come up this side, you run directly into the sign. It might sound strange coming from a trainer, but you really have to keep a close eye on him in, in terms of pushing too hard. He, at times, can function like a racehorse in which, you know, he'll just keep going until he, he dies uh, or gets injured. <laughs> you went for a run. I went for a run. At 3 a.m.? At 3 a.m. <laughs> we actually uh, organized a step challenge, so there's eight of us that are going head to head in a step challenge. <laughs> there's a little bit of insanity that uh, I wouldn't say crept in, it actually exploded in. That next Friday, we were off to the Bahamas. Jeff had heard of a famous recording studio in Nassau. Do you know, do you know we, we landed in the Bahamas? And we landed and raced the whole island. Yeah, somebody said it was two and a half hours to jogged the whole island. And I was like, oh, I can do it in less than that. And Charlie's like, well, I can do it in less than that. <laughs> and right off the plane, a challenge to run the whole island. 
So I was like, whenever you stop, I'm right. going a mile more than that. Right. So just Period. know. Right. And he tapped out. He tapped out at 12 miles, and I ran 13. I just feel like human beings excel more easily and more effectively in groups. Four two nine. Set the best time, Jazz. Go. The fight camp mentality is the way that my mind excels. Five seconds, Jazz. Yes, go. Four, three, two. Yeah. Eight forty-six. There yeah, you go, Yon. There you awesome, go, Yon. Everyone's just collapsing. That's great. But, huh? uh, <laughs> I'm always looking to put together the tribe that is going to go on this mission together. <laughs> How many reps are you doing, Scott? Oh, no control there. Full eight. Full eight. OK, cool. That one was better. Almost went for the 10. Nine, that was nine. Come on, I'm gonna help you with the set. I'm gonna help you with the set. Yeah, get his shit off camera. And then, and then I'll put it back. Put it back. <laughs> Will got over 30,000 steps, oh, I think gosh. 32, 33. Just to put that in perspective, I ran a marathon with less steps than what he did yesterday. I'm gonna get as close to death as I can tonight on the treadmill. This is like the exact thing that I recommend you not do, which is go all in, go extreme, do these intense competitions. Like if you're trying to lose weight, ease into it, stay consistent. I mean, I'm I'm assuming it works out for Will, but we're gonna see. <laughs> <laughs> So what's happening, man? I've Fair had time. a hamstring issue. You now I'm about to get my ass shocked. Hey. Whoa. Hey. Whoa. <laughs> well, how was rehab? Well, I can't run in the morning, and I talked all that crap, and then I don't get to trade tomorrow. But it's 24 hours, so I'll run tomorrow night. Our first full studio session, day nine in the Bahamas, was more like a night in a club. Jeff was DJing while we all sat around with girls and food and drinks. Occasionally, I would get up on the mic, more performing for the crowd than trying to innovate or create new music. Me and Jeff were unfocused and out of sync. It seems like your life is like, like excelling, but it's actually falling apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right? Yeah, yeah. It really was, right? Yeah, yeah, it really cool. was. Well, it's D. I'm getting a little worried about the deadline for the book. I think we owe the publishers like five chapters at this point. Give me a call. This is the this is the problem. But feelings, right? You sound crazy even questioning whether you should be caring about whether feelings are. <laughs> well, feelings come in after survival. No, you can't survive without addressing the feelings. Not what if a pit bull is chasing them. They're not going to talk to you about how they feel. They're going to want you to get that pit bull off of them. You're just making up crazy stuff just to avoid trying to talk about the real thing. After that first session, our manager pulled Jeff and I aside and warned us that if we didn't start recording, he was pulling the plug. You don't understand the creative process, I said. This environment, the people, all the stuff we're doing is our inspiration. Just let us do what we do, and you do what you do, I said. He nodded very slowly as if to say, OK, I see how it is. One month and a couple hundred thousand dollars into our process, we had still not completed a single song. Our album was doomed from the start. When I bought my first motorcycle, a blue Suzuki Katana 600, I wasn't perceiving that as a medicinal reflex. 
All right, let's get it. Nor did I connect the purchase of my custom Suburban to my feelings of inadequacy, loss, and betrayal. I didn't correlate my cravings and my generally erratic behavior with the wounded state of my heart. That's fantastic. The thing is, the bigger the fantasy you live, the more painful the inevitable collision with reality. There are skin lacerations. So many people, though, have that delusion, and it, it pushes them in a good way. And they never really reach reality. Like, so many people are so delusionally driven after success that they won't stop until they achieve it. And that's the mentality of how you get there. You know, if you, if you have that mentality to change your body no matter what, it doesn't matter if it takes you a year, five years, 15 years, but if you're delusional about what you're going to achieve with your body, eventually you are going to achieve it. I mean, if, if you look at more extreme examples of professional level bodybuilders, like when they start off, they're not massive, they're not the best in the world, but it's that delusion of believing that they can that drives them to that reality. Now, of course, there's that, um, there's that line where it's like too much delusion and life will pull you back, but I think for the most part, it's a healthy delusion. It, it's honestly probably a good thing. He's like excruciating pain. So you need stitches for sure. The universe will slap you awake in the tune of a thousand angry voices and will invoke a painful and divinely perfect retribution. This is gonna be a mess. He had a lot that he was sort of working with this week. I'm talking! Oh, Will, can you stand over here? Can you do this? You are killing me. This shit is stupid. I'm done, and I'm ready to move on with my life. All right, Will. Interesting episode. Not a lot of nutrition stuff. Not a lot of stuff to comment on. Um, but, yeah, I mean, from the looks of it, he's burning himself out way too quick. Like, he's doing way too much. And I know it's that high-performer attitude. I know it's the attitude of cameras are on. He wants to perform his best and do his best. Because that's probably who he is, but... At the same time, man, it's, it's silly, right? It's silly. Tortoise in the hair. Tortoise in the hair. One of the first lessons I learned as a kid. You want to take your time. You want to be the tortoise. Enjoy the process rather than going in like the hair and then taking breaks throughout because you're going in so hard. So, well, with that being said, you know, we know uh, my process and what we teach our guys is more specific with sustainability around fasting, fasting done in a healthy way. If you're interested in learning about our process, check the description in this video for our free training. It's going to walk you through A all the way through Z of how we do what we do, why we do what we do, and why it's so effective. So check that out. But with that being said, I appreciate you a ton. Make sure to subscribe if you're looking for more great content. Let me know your thoughts on this episode in the comments. And with that being said, I appreciate you. And as always, eat smart, move more, sleep deep, and be grateful for this moment. I'll see you next time.